we are at Livingston Sewage Treatment Facility and I'm Dr. Bill Kleindel and today we're talking with Russ Smith who is the supervisor here and he's going to show us how this plant works. We're going to have a fascinating tour. And this is, you said, the best looking sewage treatment plant in America? In the best, world. In the world. In the world. What's this, uh, what's this mountain range right here? Uh, that's the Absorcus. And you guys get on the cover of like sewage treatment. I mean, this would be a beautiful, look how beautiful this is. Yeah, it's a great place yeah. to work. Where are we right now? So uh, this building is called the Headworks building and almost every treatment plant has a place where the raw influent, the sewage, comes into. And I, I gotta tell you, I've been on pig farms. This is the most pig farmy. This smell is a, man, it is a powerful, rich odor. Aromatic. Yes, eye-watering yeah. aromatics. What's this thing? So uh, the influent flows underneath the ground in the sewage system. It flows into these channels in the ground, in this concrete slab. And this is a screen when it picks up debris, mainly we call them rags. Rags can be anything from literal rags, flushable baby wipes, which uh, are uh, our nemesis, to other foreign debris. A anything that somebody puts down, either the toilet or their sink, or that somehow leaks into our system. It's important to remove that because that can clog our pumps. And so rag removal is the first step to uh, pre-treating the water before we uh, move it down the system. What, what's, that, what's that other machine back there? So back there, after we remove the rags, we settle out, we call it grit which is mostly sand, uh, there might be heavier food particles, uh, anything that doesn't get into the fine mesh rag removal will ultimately be pumped and filtered out of a different device and that's the uh, grit removal system. And it's really important to protect all of our pipes, uh, the plumbing and the pumps and apparatus uh, throughout the rest of the plant. So if a kid swallows a nickel and then it passes into your whole system, the grit box is where the nickel's gonna get caught? The, the, nickel, the nickel will probably end up in the rag bin. And, rag we, bin? and we have found money, uh, we found baseballs, guitar picks, feminine hygiene products, uh, abundance of, of that type of material. It's, uh, it's not really a pleasant place, but it, you know, the way I look at the headworks is it's a little slice of society. This looks complicated. This is the main control thing? This is our main control panel for the most critical of our systems, not all. If I push one of those buttons, will things go wrong? Um, potentially. I'm really concerned about what this is. So, uh, How often does critical one start flashing So for example, this pump just um, experienced a thermal overload. So it turned red. It's like a nuclear plant. Right, uh, but we Ugh. have these other backup pumps. Okay. So we, yeah. we have a lot of redundancy here for critical systems. Yeah. So anytime a critical system were to fail, we get a critical overload. It doesn't actually fail, it just overheats. Right, it, yeah. the failure is all relative. How often do you guys run? That was a question I'm curious about. When is there like the whole thing starts blinking red, do you grab the rubber boots and, and just take off? Oh, you mean actually run? Yeah, running, personnel. yeah, running. Yeah, like we uh, gotta go deal with it right now. Yeah, we, we usually don't have to run. The main thing is to not to panic in a sewer treatment plant. <laughs> so that's be my whole deal, is panicking it all. Yeah, well you might slip and fall. We would not want that. So we left the uh, intake with the food comes in, the influence. Yep. And then it goes from there to? It gets pumped through the influent pump station yep. here and up to our reactor basins on the back side of this building. We're on the top of the two reactor basins and right now the effluent is moving through that device there called a decanter. It's, it's not allowing the scum into the effluent because of that baffle. Most of the solids have settled to the bottom and the clear effluent is leaving the top and that flows down and out of this building into the ultraviolet treatment room. 
This basin over here is in a different part of its phase. This is a fine uh, bubble diffuser system which supplies plenty of oxygen to the bugs into the mixed liquor. This is completely mixed and in a growth phase. So this is in a, a react phase, if you will, and this is in a settle decant phase. It's also periodically pumping out the settled sludge and we waste it to the waste activated sludge holding basin. And we call that WAS for the acronym for waste activated sludge. The, how deep are these? The depth of the uh, actual treatment is about anywhere from 13 to 18 feet. And it fluctuates up and down. In extreme cases, we may have to actually get down near some apparatus to do uh, critical repair. Like it would have to be super extreme. Not something. I'd imagine. Not something to use ready. the USS poop ring. That would be extreme as well. And then this shovel. Well, you know, you're you're at a poop plant, and a shovel is going to come in handy. This thing scares me the most. Yeah, it's uh, again not something that we would do. We would have our personal flotation devices on. Uh, the the boat would be secure, but. Do you have life jackets for this? Yes. Yeah. I just don't imagine that would be a good day. No, but it is, you know, part of the job. You're working around open tanks. And You're a better man than I, Russ. Well, somebody's yeah. got to do it. Somebody's got to do it. <laughs> Seems like this whole place runs on pipes, right? Yes. So we have arrows going in of the influent, which is I and F, I guess. That's right. And then we have arrows going out, which is the WAS, the waste activated sludge. And then Seabream, what is that? C, what is this? What is that one? So the, the process it uses sequencing batch reaction, and this is the effluent. So oh, that was the, the one. the clear fluid that leaves. That was um, the one being decant, decanted. That's correct. Okay. And then the air from the big pumps. Yep, the air, compressed air flows through that into the reactor basin. And chlorine if necessary, I guess, the CL. Yes. It seems complex, there's a lot of pipes and, and valves and instrumentation, but it's fairly simple. In our process, we're trying to separate the clear liquid from everything else. It's not completely disinfected, it still has some solids in it, and it has potential pathogens in it, uh, but we treat that through ultraviolet uh, disinfection. Let's go see the ultraviolet. That's a great idea. Uh, this is the UV building. So the effluent comes in that great big purple tube. Yep, comes up through here, and then it flows through this channel, and when it's flowing, UV lights come on and it flows literally through the lights. They're basically tubes. If they were on, would there be like light coming out? We'd if see they were on, light? you would see uh, the hue of the UV lights. And UV light does what? It destroys the uh, genetic material of pathogens. So it gets through the cell wall and it will disrupt the cell nucleus and uh, it can't reproduce anymore. So E. coli is basically sterilized. Okay, so after it goes through this UV light, then that's the last phase, then it goes to the Yellowstone River. That's right. After the effluent leaves the UV building, it uh, goes into a pipe uh, and it flows underground out here to the river where it uh, ultimately is discharged into the Yellowstone River at this point. How do you know that it's okay to dump in the Yellowstone River? Every day, we sample our effluent through this composite sampler, and we compare what's coming in to what's leaving to see how well we're performing, uh, and we will run tests to determine how much E. coli may be remaining. According to our discharge permit, through the National Pollution Discharge Elimination System. The NPDES. The NIPDES. This is a pretty awesome thing. Yeah, it's I uh, wouldn't have suspected how awesome it is. Yeah, it's a little more than uh, most people know, you know, this just happens in the background of society. Let's go look at the solids. Love to. Let's go look at those <laughs> solids. <laughs> this tank is uh, a holding basin for the waste activated sludge, i.e. the solids coming out of our reactor basin. It gets pumped in here periodically based on the cycle of the reaction. And this is the solids portion. The entire process here in Livingston is an aerated system. From the growth phase of our uh, reaction and on down the line through our digestion all involves air. 
uh, aerobic respiration. Air. This is aerobic uh, respiration. It's important for us to maintain a level of oxygen throughout the process in order to feed the right types of bugs, of uh, bacteria. We live in their world. Yeah. Uh, there's yeah. more bacteria on and in you than your yeah. own cells. So yeah. we, uh, we basically try to amplify those bacteria that do the, the work of metabolizing the nutrients in the sewage. The waste activated sludge leaves the, the big tanks, moves through the WAS tubes, and ends up in this room, right? Yes. Okay. So this is where we, uh, we make it more concentrated through this thing called a rotating drum thickener. This process involves uh, combining the WAS with some polymer, which helps things kind of coagulate, and it flows through this long rotating screen. It still has potential E. coli, other pathogens. This has not been uh, treated or disinfected. It's just thickening. That is intense. This is another one of those moments when you want to wash your hands. Yeah. This is safe as long as you're not doing shots of it. Yeah. But if you're going to eat a bologna sandwich right now, you definitely going to be watching it. We don't eat outside the break room. OK. More clear effluent leaves the thickener through that pipe, it goes back to the top of the system, and the thickened WAS is then transferred to our digester. We, we concentrated the solids, the waste activated such, then it got thickened, what we just saw, into the jello. Call it TWAS. Okay, let's call it TWAS. Then the TWAS goes in these big tanks. We grow the bugs over there in that tank we visited. Yep. Now we're gonna digest them. After we thicken it, we put them in this digester. And this is an aerobic digester, and so the noise you hear is more air. Yeah. So the types of bugs living in there depend on air. They're eating any excess nutrients, and then they're de decaying and dying. They might be eating each other. Uh, and the air comes on and the air goes off to uh, make it more efficient and to uh, rake things down even further. So that settling tank over there, the, the big circular one, mm -hmm. this would be thicker, I assume. Yeah, so um, when it moves at about 5,100 uh, milligrams per liter, parts yeah. per million, uh, it's thickened to about uh, 28 to 30,000 parts per million. Almost every weekday, we'll dewater the digested sludge, which is similar to thickening mm -hmm. in that it's making it more concentrated again. Mm -hmm. um, at this point in the digester, it's been through its natural process heated uh, and simplified, and, and through that, a lot of the pathogens have been killed, and that's really the uh, uh, the main reason for digestion is to make it safer uh, for. Um, different uses uh, or disposal. Mm -hmm. In this case, we're using this apparatus mixed with this polymer, again, a different polymer. Uh, it's mixed in this tank with the digested sludge. This is actually mechanically pressed to a concentration of about 15% or 150,000. And that takes the water out. Really. And that pushes that, um, that press eight out, and that goes back to the head of the system. And what we're left is, uh, we call it, interestingly enough, cake. Man, you guys. Starts as food, then turns yeah. into liquor, and then ends as cake. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's amazing. Not going to your house for your birthday party. So we, okay. we saved a little sample of cake over by uh, over by One of the cameras? Just to try to pick yeah. it up? And that, that's basically what the cake looks like. Do I pick it up? Um, you know, this is relatively safe. I'll wash my hands and I'm done. Normally I would go ahead and have gloves on, but this cake, it basically looks like um, it's kind of you know, a chocolate cake. Kind of like a cookie, right? This, again, um, is digested sludge yeah. that's been pressed and dewatered. Uh, it's not poop, but it's, it's again, uh, decayed and, and dead bacteria and carbon, long carbon chain organic matter. And you can see it's a black, nice black color. It's, hmm. it's a chock full of organic matter and, and other nutrients, which can actually be used. Over there, we convey it up and we mix the cake with sawdust and chips 
from a local sawmill. And we mix it up and we convey that into these giant vessels outside, which we create compost out of. Uh, and, and at that stage, we call them biosolids. And where does the compost go? We give it back to the community. Truly from the start of the process, when you think about taking raw sewage, uh, human waste and other, whomever's contributing to our sewage system, whether it's industry, uh, people cleaning paintbrushes, uh, detergents and soaps, fecal matter and all the, all the other things, uh, we actually turn it into a usable product. So we're truly recovering all these resources, uh, putting some back to the river after it's disinfected, and then some back into the earth, which helps uh, you know, fix carbon from the atmosphere.